We're picking our nose. <laughs> That'll be forever archived. I would ask those that are not speaking to, to mute themselves just so we don't get additional feedback here in the studio. Yeah, thank you, Lars. You want all of us to do that or what? Yes, sir, please. Okay. Yeah. We don't want, we don't want to hear the audio of your nose picking. And the best thing to do if you haven't already done so is on Zoom on the upper right hand corner, you can click how you view this. And if you click on speaker view, you will get the best experience. Yes. All right. We have a nice crowd with us here. We've got 26 people ready to Excellent. have a wonderful evening. And at 6.05, I think we should get going. OS, what do you think? I agree. OK, Simone? Yes, we're Michelle. ready. All right. OK. And Richard, oh my goodness, what a All pleasure. Right. pleasure. Pleasure and honor this is. Welcome. We're so glad to have all of you with us this evening. I'm Grace Winston from WFMT 98.7 Classical WFMT here in Chicago. Very honored to join all of you this evening and bring you a very special edition of the uh, Art Therapy with AARP Foundation Experience Board. If you haven't already done so, if you could please go ahead and mute yourself would be great so that way everyone can hear our presentation clearly um, and just to let you know once again if you haven't been a part of our events in the past AARP Foundation Experience Corps and Classical WFMT we've come together to present an exclusive series of interviews from the Studs Turkle archives and it's our way combined of telling you how very much you need. Now, if you haven't muted yourselves, please go ahead and, and uh, just as a reminder to go ahead and mute. And I'm gonna go ahead now and turn it over for a few words of thanks from our Chicago Volunteer Recruitment Manager, Mr. O.S. Owen. O.S. Greetings and salutations. I am here live in the studio of Richard Hunt. I wanna thank all of you for supporting us throughout the year. This is a very special art therapy listening event. I am honored and grateful to be your volunteer recruiter for the Experience Corps. Our goal is to recruit those that are 50 and over to be volunteer tutors and mentors for kindergartners, first graders, second graders, and third graders in Chicago public schools, and also to engage our volunteers take them on a lifelong journey. Thank you all so much for your commitment, for your passion to our young scholars. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you are doing. And thank you for what you, you will do. It is my pleasure to once again, I wanna say thank you Grace so much for being a part of this and bringing all of these pieces together. And I've got to tip my hat off to Simone Woods who is actually my cohort in art therapy. And now with this piece, we have taken to a whole nother level. Thank you so much, Simone, for your creativity, for your compassion, and for your commitment. And at this point in time, you have Simone Woods. Good evening, everyone. Um, this is our fall art therapy program. And we are honored like to have it? Richard Hunt, um, the sculptor, okay. with us today. And Again, what the one thing um, that we are wanting to recognize is this is Black Fine Arts Month. Um, this is uh, when we talk about Black Fine Arts, again, we have the honor of having the man that really represents Black Fine Arts Month for us. Um, if you hadn't heard about Black Fine Arts Month, again, this is designated as the month of October where we really highlight 
African Americans and the, their contributions to the arts. I would like to introduce to you Pat Keenan, who is um, the owner of the Pigment Magazine, and she is the founder and, and has created the Black Fine Arts Month. So Pat. Thank you, Simone. It is such an honor to be here with the AARP Foundation Experience, WFMT, and most importantly, Mr. Richard Hunt, international sculptor and Chicago native. Uh, as Simone said, Pigman International, uh, were, we were the founders of Black Fine Art Month back in 2018 when we realized there was no annual celebration of Black creativity, Black artists, collectors, and all those that make the Black art ecosystem work. So we began that in 2019 in partnership with the DeSable Museum. And each October, we do a whole series of programming. Tonight's program is the culmination of activities that we have done throughout the month of October, starting at the DeSable Museum. We were at the Cliff Dwellers Art Club, we had a virtual event last night, and then tonight we end on such a high note uh, with Mr. Hunt. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and we also have a YouTube site. So this conversation will be archived as well as all the ones we did this year and last year. So thank you for being our partner, and we're very much looking forward to this very important conversation. Thanks. So I'm going to turn it back over to Grace, who's going to tell you about the event tonight. Thank you so much. So um, if you haven't, once again, if you have not joined us in the past for one of our special listening events, we are featuring the archives from Stud Sturkle. And Stud Sturkle started his morning radio show at 98.7 WFMT back in 1952. He was a regular at the 11 a.m. shift for decades and then moved to 5.30 p.m. in the late 1980s. And his feeling tone, he called it that he, he would be able to talk to people from all over the world and be able to have them feel very comfortable with his interviews. And as you're about to experience, you'll see um, why he and, uh, and Richard Hunt had such a wonderful conversation back in 1993. And just if you, if I didn't tell you earlier, 1,200 interviews is what um, culminated in over 45 years. He had 16 multi award winning novels and memoirs, and we are very fortunate to have this very special event taking place with us tonight. So, about the event itself, the audio portion of the event will last for around 25 minutes. And Excuse me, right here. The, um, immediately following the listening portion, we are going to have a chance to participate in a live interview with Mr. Richard Hunt here and featuring our guest interviewer, Simone Woods. Also, I want to tell you that we're going to have a special raffle at the end of our evening. Everyone in attendance will have the opportunity to win a Jean-Michel Besquat pop artist figurine. <laughs> Simone's holding it up there in the screen if you can see it. So please, you can either do so now or, um, or later after the presentation. But if you want to be entered into that raffle, there's four of these wonderful figurines that we'll be giving away. Please enter your first and last name in the chat as well as the city that you are viewing from. Um, we don't want to assume that you're here in Chicago. So uh, if you're outside the city, we'd love to hear where you're viewing from. Okay, I think it's time. Everyone, we invite you to sit back, relax, and allow yourself to be transferred back in time to August 1st, 1993, when studs, now usually it's the interview, the interviewer or interviewee entering the studio at WFMT, but no, this time it was studs being invited to the studio of Richard Hunt. And we just are so thrilled to hear what that what they had to say together and here it comes. 
Uh, who is Richard Hunt? We got to go back to begin. <laughs> well, and never but, wander about. So much. Well, well, uh, yeah, okay. Richard Hunt, the sculptor who uh, grew up in Chicago, um, uh, studied at the School of the Art Institute, and as a matter of fact, at a time when Catherine Koo was the curator of 20th century art, and as a matter of fact, was responsible for bringing a lot of these seminal artists to Chicago and to the Art Institute for students like me and a, a whole group of others in the 50s who gone on to do important things were able to see. It, it, was, it, it, it made uh, the School of the Art Institute along with the museum an important laboratory for learning not only the techniques but having influences from all over the world sort of present uh, to look at during our own artistic development. Here's the dictator again. <laughs> we have taken uh, the phone off the hook, or as you, Richard, <laughs> says, we have killed the dictator. <laughs> right. you, you were saying yeah. about Catherine Q and the work, the works of 20th century she brought in, and right. that period of your growing, you were there, and so, all this played a role in your... Exactly. This was, you know, this was, like I say, in, in, during the 50s here in Chicago, uh, you know, a time when... Uh, there was uh, there was this activity at the Art Institute that uh, she and Daniel Catton Rich were uh, responsible for, also Fred Sweet, the curator of American art. Uh, and it was a period where uh, there was uh, a lot of collecting activity on the part of Chicago collectors of important European and American mm -hmm. artists, and a period when. Uh, 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 the, the artists, uh, a lot of artists like Golub and Cliff Westerman who were uh, older, who were veterans coming back to school on the GI Bill, and then younger people like myself and Irving Petlin and a group of people uh, who were... That was an exciting period. Here, yeah, World War I vets coming back on the World GI War II, Bill of Rights. Be, yeah. uh, GI Bill. Uh, you mentioned Leon Golub. Uh, right, yeah. And here you, uh, of some of the younger ones, me... Uh, young, younger ones coming out of Chicago high schools, Inglewood High School, yeah. Tule, yeah, whatever, you know, That's Marshall you High, Inglewood. Inglewood, yeah, right. Uh, you know, and, and, and then all these influences, you know, and of course, uh, the Institute of Design was there too with people, you know, from the new hub. Uh, so so there, was, there was all this at the same time, and so a, a, a rich variety of influences, you know, and we've mentioned the ones that bear directly on the kind of technique that I've come to, to work with, Smith and Gonzalez and people like that who work with metal, but there was this whole feeling, though, about uh, sort of experimentation, working with, in all kinds of different ways that was uh, just part of 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 the the, the, so the life of, the, of the, yeah right and so yeah. you started what uh, now the idea of abandoned metal or abandoned right. fabric right. in junkyards or wherever they might be in the streets mm -hmm. and alleys you found you you were attracted to certain pieces weren't they because they might have hit something in your head, triggered something? Right, well, well one, one, one develops a, a kind of, um, well, well a, a sense uh, for certain imagery that they want to pursue and develop. Uh, one of the things that was, uh, you might consider a blessing at the time for, for uh, art students uh, or young artists, uh, you know, sort of, sort of seeking to have, um, you know, have material available is to is you know this whole uh, approach to abandoned material yeah. uh, the industrial refuse and what all they call like it? that found found uh, objects found, found objects yeah uh, uh, and and uh, that's that was a rich resource I mean both for the kind of associations one could make with the found objects and the fact that they were available to any anyone uh it's not like uh, buying a piece of carrara marble or a piece of cocobolo wood you know i mean uh uh so that uh so so that there's a possibility of um, both uh developing something very beautiful and precious out of this, but at the same time, it didn't have the preciousness yeah. to begin with. I mean, it was it was there to experiment with. The to... stuff was inside it. it right. There was something that could be quite beautiful inside it. Right. If you, right. you can get at the core right. of it, right. getting into. Right. You said chipping away earlier, describing yeah. it was a work in stone. Right. And yeah. Metal, right. Metal right. too, of course. Right. Chipping away, in a sense, finding the heart 
yeah. of something. Yeah. Right, and and, and 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 well, and, and and responding to that, I mean, being able to to at at a, at a certain point in time look outside of the traditional materials and see in you know what's around the possibilities, the, the possibilities un of untapped. Yeah. By the way, un I said untapped. <laughs> it, as you use the hammer and the chisel, you are tapping, <laughs> well, smacking, yeah, and right, doing. Right, but right. Uh, we turn to another one it's around us, larger pieces. Mm -hmm. These books are about upward, upward movement, surge. Yeah, Here right. is one that definitely. This is a brass, right. a well, much bronze, larger yeah, right, bronze, right. bronze. Yeah, right. no, but yeah. A much larger one, and yeah, right. whatever the object is, he, she, it, is mm -hmm. surging in such a way that that body or thing is going to get somewhere, <laughs> is going to make it. Do you remember? You know, you know, your spontaneous description of it is, is wonderful to me because. It, it, it's a piece that's grown, and and and, and I've, I've decided to call it growing forward. Yeah. You, you know, going, growing. Let me, before no, okay. let me tell yeah. you why I got that. Uh, idea. Okay. I reminded me, uh, years ago, I visited the Etruscan Museum. Okay. Okay. In the Etruscan Museum is a smaller, not a miniature, but a, not a large, statue of Apollo. Okay. And this Apollo is moving forward. Mm -hmm. Like a young yuppie on the make. Okay. And yeah. I said to myself, yuppie, and the word yuppie wasn't uh, used there, right, but right. hot shot on the make. Okay. And right. he had something in his hand, it looked like it could have been an attache case. <laughs> but he was had the same surge, mm -hmm. same move forward, don't stop me, I'm on my way. Okay. And so this particular bronze has that same forward, I call it a hollow <laughs> movement no, no, that okay, I saw, yeah, yeah. making it. Right, right. And yeah, it's yeah. funny, it's great. Yeah. Immediate. What, uh, what, what do you see? Well, okay. I mean, like, like this, this feeling too is a, is achieved by, uh, you know, a, a certain, both, both intended, you know, the, the, these angles of ascent, you might say, starting from the base, which are, which are, are simple, somewhat geometric, triangles, folds. Uh, directed you know, upward, you know, at about 60 degrees or something. They they get Any alcohol? more complicated and differentiated into things like what it could be like like limbs of the anatomy or branches. Uh, you know, the, the I didn't want that starts out becomes somewhat uh, you know figural. This kind of like an arm reaching out, and then and then things growing from it. You know, the idea then of, of being able to to graft on to uh, one form uh, forms that have other identities, you know, you know what you almost said. like the attributes of yeah. the gods. Well, you, know what, you know what you said in describing us, attributes of the god. First you said it could be some part of the anatomy, that right. of the human, or mm -hmm. the animal anatomy. And then you said branches. So you connected the flesh and blood being with nature. Yes. So the one, right. and in fact, it could well easily. So it was. I look at it and I say branches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I also look at it. And I say, surging forward, right. arms, head up mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. The head way up. A horn, perhaps. You know, mm -hmm. unicorn esque. Yeah. But not a unicorn. Yeah. Uh, or and and down below, something powerful. Mm -hmm. But it could be the it could be the earth also the, of a yeah, tree. Uh, yeah. The, so the, it's nature the, and the animal. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, right, of the right. being, and, and 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 of course, going back to uh, mythology, which was a, a, an early source of imagery and inspiration. I mean, uh, some early works were more, well, more illustration of myth. I mean, I did an early piece I called Arachne, another one I called Icarus, or something. Uh, at, at this point, the idea is 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 to synthesize all of this into more abstract forms but that that yet can have these sort of associations but i mean uh think about uh, apollo and daphne for that matter the woman turned into the tree you know uh and uh so mythology so, yeah yeah so so this whole idea out of mythology of metamorphosis of forms turning into other forms humans turning into animals like arachne turning into the spider by minerva uh well the old couple living who were so nice to the uh, disguised gods hermes oh, oh, mercury right, right and the milk jug forever full and they finally 
the reward to be together and they became two trees. Right, right. Yeah. Filament yeah, yeah, right, right, right. And so that's part of it too. Yeah. Again, yeah. nature and that. Now, let's turn. So far mm -hmm. we, we've hit the, uh, the bronze. Now, here's mm -hmm. stainless steel. Right. right behind us. Yeah. So it's getting larger now. Now to you, <laughs> we'll finally wind up next to the state of Illinois building. Uh, Richard Hunt is my host and the artist in residence. <laughs> His residence. <Right. laughs> Some residence. <laughs> Pretty exciting place. Uh, uh, now this huge work of stainless steel we now turn toward. Right. Uh, this uh, the, the, this particular piece which is in, in progress is, uh, uh, well, we're looking at, at, at the top half or the top portion of a piece that's called Explorer Column. And as we kind of walk around, we can see This is in things. progress. Right. And this is uh, top half. Uh, and, and this is like, these are like, uh, could be like wings or points of a star that uh, the explorer uses to navigate mm -hmm. by. You know, and this and, and and this is this is using again this sort of sort of hybrid or synthesized image out of a variety of things in 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 a somewhat different way. You know, around here is more like a kind of wing form, the the, the sort of sort of curving wing form that, that you see often now this has in my form. work. Now we've come to another dimension here. It's no longer that nature and the animal together, not. Here's something out of a new age, in mm -hmm, a way. Mm -hmm. Something industrial, but post-industrial. Something out uh, of a new uh, age here, uh, beyond uh, nature. Right. So, uh, you have uh, huge, uh, you say wings. It almost looks like wings of wings of a, a plane. Uh, a plane. No, ex exactly. You know. Yeah. So, so that, so you know, so that that there's this thought of of ex exploring both sea and space. Uh, so that, you know, from various points of view, and mind you, uh, in, in works like this, another thing to consider is not only the development of the image, but its positioning, uh, you know, its ultimate positioning either in the composition or in, on a particular site. But, but one will be looking up at this and, of course, seeing these things pointing up to the sky, you know, mm -hmm. and then this wing positioned above again, the head. Again, it's the surging. Well, okay. Upward. Okay. The right, reaching right, again. Right, yeah. right. And, and, and I mean, th this form, a little bit like the prow of a ship, uh -huh. you know, so, so that you combine... Uh, sea and air. Uh, sea, yeah, 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 exactly. And, 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 and somewhat, you know, somewhat the curve okay. of a bird wing, but, but, and again, the metal itself, the stainless steel, uh, you know, has these more industrial associations. Bronze, uh, you know, like, has has both this rich history in in sculpture and 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 all worked in a contemporary way. You know, these are th these pieces we've been looking at, welded bronze pieces, but yet the material has has a certain kind of richness and a certain. Yeah tradition and history with well, the bronze age. Exactly. We, don't, we haven't heard the word steel age. Yet. <laughs> right. Or the stainless steel age. But but so but so there's there's this in, in a in a relationship of these forms that that deal with exploration, wings, mm -hmm. prows of ships, star points, uh, that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, they go, they combine now, in this piece. Now, this work, it's a huge one, by the way. It's uh, This is the top, you say. Right, the piece overall so this will be is about be a 22 rather feet. Large, much 22 monumental feet piece. high, yeah, right. How many um, feet high? 22 feet 22 high. 22 feet high. Yeah, right, yeah. Will this be public? Uh, uh, this will be uh, in the street, a yeah, square? Yeah, it, it, it'll be uh, at the entrance to a campus of, uh, of a uh, college in uh, in Hartford, Connecticut. Connect commu oh, the, community these, college. I'll ask yeah. you about commission, yeah, how you right, work on right, that. Yeah, in right. Sense, you, right, and we can talk this about been that commission. in relation. Yeah, right, exactly. And what did they ask for, this college? Uh, well, well, the idea was, was uh, uh, in, in, in this case, I, I was commissioned basically to explain explore in a sense an idea of something appropriate for the college as a matter of fact uh, the the in in this case uh, it's uh, some of the main courses are technical and as a matter of fact uh, there's an interest there in maintaining uh, in, in in 
Connecticut, the sort of air, some of the aerospace, uh, you know, Pratt and Whitney mm -hmm. uh, there and stuff like. That. So, so, the, so the idea of, uh, uh, you know, you know, came to me about this explorer column, you know, relating to, like I say, there's the ship's prow and all, you know, earlier exploring the seas, now exploring in space, you know. So you sort of bring those what this things says. together, and 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 the thing is. Uh, here, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm turning some of this uh, approach that, that, that this abstracting, uh, improvising way of working in these pieces that we've been looking at that I call self-generated pieces mm -hmm. out of the studio, out of my own sensibility, you, you turn that somewhat to try to, you know, in, in, interpret or present an idea in relationship to a site or a specific so situation. This, fits, this will fit the purpose of that Hartford, Connecticut school. Right. Beginning but, with aerospace or something involving. Right, but at the same time, it, 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 it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a continuing evolution of my own forms, you ah. see. You know, and, and that's, that to me is important in working with commissions, not to, not to have a, I mean, I mean, while certainly you have things like scale, materials relating to the architecture, the environment, you have those things to deal with in a commission and you have to approach it uh, Before, in, 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 well, well, well in, in, maybe in stages, going from models to larger scale so work. You and are that sort of thing. evolving now too, as an artist, as this work. Ooh, ooh, I mean, as right. a yeah. sculptor, something right. further. Before right. we hit that, that end part about what next for mm -hmm. Richard Hunt, mm -hmm. what form and next. Right. We've got to talk about after the the, the new work that's in in the area there, where the Picasso uh, is the. Uh, the Dubuffet, Dubuffet is, uh, the, the, the Miro, of Chagall, yeah, right. what Calder is. Yeah. Uh, we have to, the baseball bat. <laughs> right, right. Mm -hmm. Yours, the State of Illinois building, you saw that form there as connected with your work. Right. right. Uh, let, let's, let's look at the model. Oh, let's look at the model. Because we're here now in the studio, Richard Hunt, as we near the end of our fascinating to me a conversation and exploration we call this the promenade pictures and right. sculpt, sculpt sculpture and an exhibition <laughs> now this is the model it has a miniature model of the uh, work of sculpture you call you call it free form free form yes free form, free form is the title uh, the, the, the the and the title uh, grew out of uh, some of the development of the piece uh, that is to say, the stages of development in relating this form, which in some ways is really uh, not, <laughs> not free, let, and let me explain that. That is to say, uh, to, to be more specific, because uh, the state of Illinois building we're talking about is the old one, that is to say, one that was the state of Illinois office building in Chicago before the state of Illinois center which is now called the Thompson Center, uh, was, was built. The Helmut the, the, Jan uh, Yeah, the Helmut Jan building. Uh, on the west side of LaSalle Street, 160 North LaSalle, on the northwest corner of Lake, pardon me, Randolph and LaSalle, is this older Beaux-Arts building designed originally by Holliburton and Root and, uh, and actually renovated, completely renovated by them. Uh, one... one uh, thing about this building, uh, there's an art and architecture program which uh, uses a percentage of the uh, uh, construction budget for works of art to uh, enhance, ornament the building. Anyway, the building, of course, is built to the street. There's not a plaza like the area in front of the State of Illinois building or the Daly Center. So the thought was to have a major work on positioned on a glass curtain wall above the uh, main entrance to the building facing LaSalle Street. Uh, this presented, in this case me, I was chosen and I was happy for the challenge that it presented, but it was a challenge nonetheless because you had a space that was broad, high and wide, but not very deep. So, so that um, uh, you started out with a set of parameters, constraints, 
uh, the, 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 the horizontal vertical grid of the window wall uh, positioned between uh, two outcroppings of the, of the face of the building. So, so uh, the idea came to me to try to enliven that space mm -hmm. with curvilinear forms that uh, played against one another and made a very lively silhouette against the ground. And so there's this, the idea is this free form laid over a very structured well, as background. As I look at your model right now, your miniature model, it has, it's a very full of life. Again, mm -hmm. bird-like, uh, wings mm -hmm. of birds or claws of birds. I wish the word bird comes to yeah, me. And, because and, and it's, fly, it's flying. That's and the idea. like an that, animal about that, to that take off. Flickers Even over though the it's surface. free form. Right, right. Well, right. this is, this is uh, all we're doing is touching cursorily <laughs> on the art of sculptor Richard Hunt. So what next hits you? <laughs> what do you look for? Another continuation of... Well, I would say even freer forms. That is to say, <laughs> you know, I mean, both in the uh, self-generated work that I, uh, that we've been looking at and, and in, in, in relating to, uh, uh, to the commission, that is to say, to use my techniques and my ability to, to uh, work both within structures and, 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 and to create structures to, to do things that are freer, more open, spatial uh, in, in, uh, in form and, and, and the way they exist, and to, uh, to, to also develop more imagery that interacts with, uh, with the environment in a, in, a, in a way that enlivens it and, uh, and, and gives a sense of both time and but that is to say, an image which exists in the present but recalls yeah. the past and suggests the future. Well, it occurs to me as you say that you could only have done this at a certain time in history. Now, you spoke of time in mm -hmm. the future. This is so long after Einstein, who mm -hmm. helped to play the role in all this. Yes, yes. And at the same time, you're in Chicago. Yeah. And stainless steel and industrial. So maybe it's one of those right. uh, happy, seren serendipitous aspects of that creator Richard Hunt, but you, you started out, at the very beginning I said you're exploring and looking, and right. you're still doing that. That's exactly and right. by way of thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much, Doug. All right, we're about Great to start to it. Wow, I am like Oh, so excited. We're here in the in the um, studio with Richard Hunt. And um, again, we came in this afternoon and started setting all the technology up. And he went over and started doing welding while we <laughs> it's just it's a passion. It's a passion. And it's like wow. And and in the studio. Oh no. What Can you guys still hear me? Yes. Yes, we still hear you. We just don't yes. see you. We don't see you. Yes. Gary started sharing his screen. He needs to unshare. Okay, Gary, we need you to unshare your screen. Okay. All right, so. Oh, so there we go, thank you. All right, so, so we're here in Richard Hunt's studio and it's full of all kinds of metal, large, big pieces of steel. Again, Mr. Hunt, do you still, how do you go about um, collecting all these different large pieces of instruments. Well, well um, in, 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 in the uh, Stud Sterkel interview, uh, there was a picture of me, you know, getting automobile bumpers uh, from a scrapyard. Uh, I don't do that uh, so much anymore. As a matter of fact, 
there are, as a matter of fact, some stainless steel scrap yards that I get uh, some either sheets of stainless steel or or various kinds of forms that that are being re, re, recycled. Uh, but anyway, um, you know, there's that aspect. But uh, over the years, I've I've come to use more. Uh, sheets of metal, uh, bronze, uh, stainless steel, sometimes uh, uh, copper, uh, and and those generally come from a uh, either a place that manufactures that is to say rolls out sheets of metal, uh, like. Uh, U.S. Steel, Revere, Brass and Copper. Uh, now it's interesting to point out that um, uh, the, there, there are not very many uh, companies in, in the United States now that uh, actually uh, uh, form, you know, sheets of brass, copper, stainless steel. Uh, most of it is brought in from uh, somewhere in uh, Europe or Asia, uh, which is an interesting uh, observation in yes, terms of how things, how, how things have changed. How things have changed yeah. quite a bit. Um, and again, 28, we're 28 years since um, the interview with studs, and it was like growing forward, free form, growing forward. Twenty-eight years ago, how have you grown forward? Give us some examples. Uh, well, well uh, uh, in, in, in terms of my, my work going forward, uh, uh, there's, there's 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 some added uh, what I might call stylistic element. Uh, uh, I, I've done more. I've, I've gone on to do uh, a, a lot more with, uh, uh, with 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 shapes, with, with sculptures that, uh, that may have several elements to it. Um, and um, I would say that. Um, that the, uh, the the pieces um, have um, uh, much mu much of the same uh, impetus energy that the earlier uh, pieces have had. Um, they're bigger. Uh, they, they're... Well, well, some some of them are. Uh, yes. Some of them have gotten larger. I, I mean, but but the, like the piece on the old state of Illinois building, you know, 30 some feet wide and 15 feet high and all. I mean, I, I mean, it's not a matter of just making something bigger. Uh, I, I mean, uh, it, 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 it has to do with, uh, you know, a, a certain commission uh, mm -hmm. for something that's going in a particular place being a certain size, but uh, but then what stuck to my own devices in the studio I just makes something that I'm going to exhibit in a gallery or something yeah. like that. Uh, there. It, 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 it's, it's something that uh, uh, just you know, develops to suit a particular moment. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. So on that note, a particular moment, one of the pieces that we looked at was the eternal flame. So, though, I mean, Mr. Hunt has all kinds of different pieces out there that you would never know there he is, but starting to um, develop an eye that the wings is air, water, animals, antlers, you can, and wood pieces, you can start to identify based on some of the things we do know, you can identify his work. But the um, 
the eternal um, flame. Tell us a little bit, eternal flame of hope. Tell us a little bit about that one. Well, um, uh, well, it it it, it, it like uh, is like what the title suggests. Yeah, you know, there are these forms that are flame like, and they, um, you know, they they they're there. The flame doesn't go out. It yeah. just maintains its form. Uh, and uh, and it was a piece that was commissioned by the Special um, Olympics, and I believe it's it's yeah, over yeah, by the um, yeah it, 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 it's it, it's. It's on the north side of Soldier Field, okay. you, you know, and, and across the street from the Field Museum. Okay. Uh, uh, and and uh, the, uh, uh, the Special Olympics people had been um, actually getting a torch lit uh, from, uh, you know, from, uh, Oh, you know where the Olympics started. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So they said, "Well, we we you know they they started to say, well, you know what we're doing the Special Olympics is what it is, and it, and it started here. So uh, we decided that." Uh, Having uh, a sculpture with an eternal flame uh, would denote the fact that, you know, here was a special Olympics at Soldier Field. Uh, and, and so there are now, uh, you know, runner up things to the Special Olympics, you know, something in one country or the other. And so instead of going to Greece to, to get the get the flame lit, uh, they come to Chicago to get the okay. flame lit if they okay. have something in Texas or California. All right. So um, beautiful piece. Beautiful. What do you credit your success to? Um uh, I would say um, hard work and good luck. Hard work and good luck. Yeah. You're lucky, huh? I would say so, yeah. I mean, there are a lot of good sculptors who aren't successful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have any um, favorites? Other uh, artists uh, that you... <laughs> that you well, well, I mean... I, I, um, well, I, I mean, there there are. I, I mean, I mean, I have sculpture sculptor friends, and then there's sculptors of the past who work influenced what I did, like going back to the early days. To, you know that uh, you know studs was part of it. Was a, when I was a student, there was a very important uh, show. The Art Institute called Sculpture of the 20th Century. And um, I saw work that a guy named Julio Gonzalez did that was welded steel, iron. Uh, and and I, I, you know, that kind of set me in the direction of working directly in metal. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there were other people too, David Smith. Yeah, I can go on and on, but 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 the thing is that um, uh, you know I've I I found a, a approach and, and the materials that just seem to you know work better for me. Just assembling things well together and contrasting with either. Chopping away at a stone or building up something in clay, and um, yes. yeah, so so yeah, so 
So, you know, I, I got pointed in this direction of, you know, working with what we call direct metal fabrication and uh, been doing it, you know, yes. for a long time. Yes. So you've done lots of different work and commissioned lots of different work. And the Ida B. Wells piece, um, we do have with us Michelle Duster. Michelle? And, and Michelle is Ida B. Wells' um, great-granddaughter. And the Ida B. Wells piece was placed earlier this year in Chicago. And I'm glad that Michelle is with us today. And I want to ask you a couple of questions about the time that you spent with Mr. Hunt in, in identifying who you wanted to do the piece for your great-grandmother. Well, um, so I was a member of a committee called that we called ourselves Ida B. Wells Commemorative Art Committee, which was um, initiated by the former residents of the Ida B. Wells homes. And um, I was asked to join the committee to have, um, you know, some family input into, <laughs> into the work. And um, my father and I joined the group together and we, we basically uh, decided to immediately see if we could get Richard Hunt um, because for us, we were familiar with his work and also Richard can tell you, I mean, he um, did have not only the information and the um, experience of, of being a native Chicagoan and somebody who was very familiar with the Bronzeville neighborhood and the history of my great grandmother and the history of Bronzeville. But he also had a history of, um, he had worked with my uncle, my father's brother. Um, so he had just a very um, in-depth insight into all of the components that we thought would make the work have extra depth that no other artist would be able to uh, be able to generate. So did you guys um, directly commission him or did you put out an RFP? No, we directly commissioned him with the hope that he would, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, take, take on the task. And we were gonna be heartbroken if he did not. He was our first and only pick. Um, and so luckily he agreed. Well, <laughs> I, I, and of course, I, I, I feel, I feel lucky that I was asked, and um, I might uh, mention that uh, in terms of my working on public art commissions, et cetera, uh, one of my first major pieces was, was something uh, uh, that was uh, commissioned uh, by Skidmore and Zamero, where your uncle was a structural engineer. And and uh, the, the so the so um, Walter Netsch, who who was the uh, architectural record for uh, state hospital uh, building that was going to have the sculpture in front of it, uh, was paired with Walter uh, who. Uh, Develop the foundation that the sculpture would go on, and uh, we well, we, and and then one thing led to another. A couple other projects, and uh, uh, so uh, so he 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 became my structural engineer. I mean, okay. whether I was working on something for Gidmore or, or later on, as I got commissioned and needed some help, I would. Yeah, so that mutual respect and just admiration for your work. Um, when we look at Ida B. Wells' um, monument, is that the first monument you've done to African-American or female, or have there been others? Um, uh, I, 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 I've done, you know, some other things. Commemorative, 
that um, maybe yeah, I would I would say maybe that that, that this is the, the first one done done to, to celebrate the life and work. Female. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but uh, and again, we are celebrating Black Fine Arts Month. And when we talk about monuments, and you know, that's a big thing right now, you know, replacing monuments, taking them down. Um, and some of the conversations we've had this, this month is regarding not just taking them down, but adding to the narrative, adding the stories that have been left out. And by Mr. Hunt participating in actually building, you know, the, the Ida B. Wells piece, Again, one thing that I can say is that it's colorless. You, you, you know, his work is colorless. You don't know who, who built it or who he's building it for. But again, based on his technique, again, it's about strength, the steel. It's, it's, it's telling a story, um, but there's, there's no color related to it. It's really about life and air and hope. And, and luck and, <laughs> okay. and when we um, I don't know if if Grace you can pull up the piece but I believe there's a story behind the piece there are three pillars or three legs to it that kind of tell Ida's story well well uh, about these three lifting thing that has sort of flame going out the top and then and then on on the base of this are uh, two images of her one at an earlier age and one at her maturity and then some some of her uh, rotation so so the idea was to have an experience uh, a sculptural experience of the form in the place they were in, but also uh, uh, a, uh, a very de definite interaction with her through her image and her quotation. And, and I mean, it, it, it's interesting too, you know, at having. Uh, these quotes and the images that, um, you know, I'm, I'm assuming the piece will be there for a long time. 50 years from now, somebody will come along. Well, they may not know Ida B. Wells like we know about Ida B. Wells. And so there, there will be. So, okay. Michelle, did you did you have something you want to add to how that structure came together and how you guys saw, saw it from your family's perspective? Well, I mean, when we first started working on the the idea of creating a piece, um, I mean, when I first started on the the committee, we didn't know what we wanted to do. We just knew we wanted to do something, um, and we talked about. Um, you know, a statue, a monument. Um, there were a lot of different ways that, you know, we saw different artwork, but then we finally decided, no, we want to have a monument. And the first person we thought of to do an abstract piece versus a, a something that was in her likeness, what, like I said, was Richard Hunt for multiple reasons. Um, and once he agreed, <laughs> um, then we had to decide as a committee what elements we wanted to have incorporated into the piece. And um, so Ida B. Wells was very famous journalist. Um, that's what a lot of people tend to know about her the most. She also was involved in the suffrage movement. Um, and she also um, was a civil rights activist. Um, as well as many other things, but those are the three main, you know, parts of her life or her career that mo most people are familiar with. And so we, when we talked with Richard about who Ida was and what work she was most involved in um, and what resonates, it almost has timeless, you know, uh, way of people re recognizing who she was. 
um, between all of us, we thought, well, there needs to be three components um, to this piece that captures those main parts of her work. Um, we also um, wanted to incorporate some aspects of her as a woman, um, not just all of her career work, but just her as a, as a woman um, and a mother. And so we talked through all of these things and that's how we selected the quotes um, to capture that part of her, as well as, um, like I said, those three different main areas of the work that she did. So Richard is the one who took that information and decided what the design would be in order to incorporate those three elements of her life. And it was activism, journalism, and what was the third? Suffrage. She was involved in the suffrage oh. movement. So it's three, and again, when you look at the piece, it's three prongs. I mean, it's, how tall is it? 22 feet? 35 feet tall. 35 feet tall. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, and, and as we have more, Oh, there it is uh, on the screen. Um, that piece that comes down in the middle, it almost looks like a staircase. Uh, so you can go up it too. Oh. It, 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 it goes oh. down in the middle, but you can go up the staircase and, 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 and beyond. Yeah, yeah. So again, just timeless. Um, again, and talking about monuments coming down, we want this one to stay up for 300 years too. <laughs> Do you do models? I mean, before you commission, do the full piece, do you do replicas or small pieces? Well, well what we call scale models. Yeah. Okay. And, 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 and I do uh, scale models. And um, so, uh, you know, until, until I got, you know, fixed on, you know, what I thought well, well worked worked the best. Some some of the models you know, were uh, well the idea one model to, to the other. And then uh, I was I got more satisfied. I thought, well this will be the takeoff point. Okay. Well I wanted to open it up for others to ask questions as well. Um, let's take a look. Do you have a favorite piece? Your favorite? Um, I would, I wouldn't say that it'd be, be just like, um, you know, you, 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 you went to somebody who had a lot of children and said, oh, what is your favorite child? child. <laughs> Right, right, right. <laughs> Do you have you ha again through in the studio? There's all, all it's all kinds of pieces everywhere. Okay. <laughs> Do you auction them off? Do you? Everything's not huge. Some things are, you know, tabletop, and they get a little bigger. Right. No, no I, I mean. Uh, um, uh, some pieces end up in auctions that either people have purchased and, uh, you know, well, for one reason or another. I mean, uh, uh, but, but, but I make pieces, I mean, the, the things that I, I make, there are clients who might come here and purchase something, or, or there are some galleries uh, that I consign work to, and and you know they get a commission, and, uh, going and selling them. Uh, but um, uh, um, <laughs> I mean, the, the core of your question was was. Uh, do you auction or sell? No, no, if, if someone wants to buy a piece, how would they go about doing it? Yeah, well, well, they, well, they might get in touch with me, or they might go to one of the galleries that I exhibit in. Mm -hmm. There's a gallery here in Chicago, and another one in New York. Okay. Uh, presently, um, and uh, 
and and then you know like I have a website and stuff like that. You know, you know people might see it, get in touch with me based on you know ha having seen something about my work or knowing something about. My work. Yes. Yes. What what do you think about the the discussion about the monuments? Do you have any particular idea? Well, just in general, you know, the discussion right now in Chicago and all over the country, really, about taking monuments down. Um, as African Americans, do you have a, a opinion on on how that should be handled? Um. Well, well, well I, I mean, I mean, it's one thing if you're gonna take down a monument to, oh, you know, some general in 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 the South, you know, uh, you know, some in the Civil War, fighting fighting to maintain slavery. You know. I, I mean, okay, so so his his family or people like him uh, after the Civil War, uh, you know, they wanted those people, some of those people to be remembered, even though they lost the war, which and of course is an interesting thing then that uh, people come along and say, well, we don't want those either. Um, uh, but, um, uh, you, you know, you know, uh, uh, there's, a, there's there's a long history, you know, of you know works of art, you know, being important, fashionable, necessary at one point in time, and at another point in time they're not. Mm -hmm. I mean, people like to say, "Oh, well, art." Some of it does, and some of it doesn't. And then some of it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it gets revived uh, when it gets dug up out of the basement of the museum and put back up because something else happened. Yeah. 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 Well, Mr. Hunt, thank you so much. Thank you. thank you. Yes. And um, thank you for all the, the pieces that you put out for, you know, and again, they're colorless. When you look at his work, you'll be able to start to recognize that it's hanging at the in the art institute, kind of like a chandelier. You, I mean, you'll go to a public place on a lot of college campuses, you'll see his pieces as public pieces of art in public spaces. And uh, just recognizing, I, I say you're, you are the ultimate in us recognizing Black Fine Arts Month. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thank you. So with that. Thank you, Simone. <laughs> Wonderful. Turn it over. Oh, turn it back Richard. over to you, Grace. Oh, you know what, Richard? That's just amazing. Thank you so much. I have to tell you, I was so thrilled um, when I found out that you were the one that made that beautiful um, sculpture for Special Olympics. And that just is so near and dear to my heart and my family's heart. So thank you. <laughs> and I, uh, I just put it, it is, it's just, it's just gorgeous, just gorgeous. Um, so I put a note out to everybody just now, if you haven't already done so and would like to enter the raffle for this evening, um, please go ahead and, uh, and put your name in the chat. And we're going to go ahead and, and raffle off four of these beautiful Jean, Jean Michel Basquat um, pop figurines. So, if you want to win one of these, please do put your name in chat. I think I've got everybody who had put their name in so far. And I'll give anyone a few more minutes. Um, actually, I give, give another shout out to um, Pigment. They have, we have a magazine. Um, there, we're working on the third issue. So look out for the pigment magazine that should be coming out before the end of the month, December. Um, the couple of articles in, in the current. 
as well as the west of the Ryan. Book honoring the legacy and a guide to African American monuments and statues. And this young lady, Tammy Gibson, she actually went out and identify all the different monuments and statues in the United States um, that are recognizing African Americans. So it's a, it's a great just read or when you're traveling where you can go look at different pieces. And I did see um, Simone, there was, there was a couple more questions and um, one of them that I saw, I would just love to hear myself the answer um, that Debbie Taylor put in here, a hundred years from now, how Mr. Hunt, how would you like your work to be described and remembered? Great question, Deb, thanks. Well, um, had um, meaning for me uh, um, that you would have uh, well, well, for one thing, that it would stand the test of time, it would still be, you know, sitting wherever one wanted it, one had intended it to be. Uh, um, and, and I think, uh, you know, one is, uh, is fortunate if there are pieces that get placed and remain there for a long time. Um, uh, you know, just in my experience, I mean, I know a lot of sculpture that was around, it isn't around, or at least not in its intended place anymore. So uh, I, I think, um, you know, it has to do with people appreciating it over time, wanting to maintain it in a particular place, or, 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 or if not, at least, well, preserving it. And um, yeah, it's, uh, well, that's the best you can hope for. Yes. Yep. Um, a couple of other comments. Um, Anthony Estelle, basically um, the bridge across and beyond on the campus of Howard University. Yes. Remember that one? Yeah. Um, piece that's... Um, that's in a in a um, in, in 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 front of the uh, um, uh, oh, old, um, water feature, and, and, and it's interesting uh, how how you can you know plan something how how this is going to be uh, in 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 this water feature uh, and, and how from time to time I've gone there and there's no water <laughs> and, 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 and so it looks a little funny but uh, it's there. Does it reflect and I'm sure when the water is there it will reflect. It, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other questions? Yeah. I think okay. there was uh well, let's see here. Carol had mentioned that one of her favorites um, was the flight forms at Midway Airport. Did I? The did flight I, forms? Yeah, yes. flight forms at Midway Airport. The flight forms, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that, that's, that certainly is something I would like to you know, see there for, for a long time. Uh, and, and and of course, it's interesting to have the opportunity, you know, because there's this percent for art 
uh, pro pro program that had to do with you know the expansion of of the airport. Uh, there were some murals inside, and and then the the fact that I had the opportunity to do this sculpture on the outside. Um, and, uh, I hope it's there for a long time. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And then there is just one more that I thought very interesting question as well that I, I was thinking myself from Don Kelly. Um, when did you, Mr. Hunt, did you, when did you start the Ivy Wells, Ida B. Wells monument? And how long did it actually take you to, to complete that? Well, um, I mean, the, the, the period of time from from the idea uh, uh, being broached to, to me that you know I could do it, uh, it, it it was I guess about twelve years before uh, you know the piece got set in place. Uh, uh, but uh, well, it'll be there for a lot, mm -hmm. lot of that's. <laughs> A hundred years. <laughs> okay sorry i think we had a glitch for a moment there okay yeah you froze for a moment <laughs> oh yeah sorry that's this wonderful were, world were, were you going to <laughs> technology right yeah the um, wonderful world of technology were you going to um share who won yeah i think we're ready is everybody ready we have the yeah. um the big jar full of, of everyone's names here. We'll do a, a, a drum roll. <laughs> Our first winner is Marty Price from Chicago. Marty. Marty Price, yeah. Yes. And um, if I name you, if I announce your name, at the very end, please stay on. So that way we can make sure we have your address and we can get your, your, special, your special figurine sent to you. Okay, I'm picking the next one out here. Carol Estelle from Chicago. Carol, Thank you. <laughs> I am, I'm digging deep in here. We've had guests also, uh, I wanted to mention, we have guests here from all over the United States. We have someone from Arizona, we have Washington DC, we have, uh, and we have Maryland, um, Anthony Estelle Owens Mills, it looks like from, oh. from Maryland. Is Anthony, our next yay. Oh, Thank you. Congratulations, so Anthony. Thank you. And again, please stay on so we can make sure we get your address. And the last one is Darlene. And that was it in chat. So Darlene, we're gonna need Darlene. to get, <laughs> get the rest of your information. Yay, Thank you. Darlene. Yay. Yay. So once again, Richard, it was just, a beyond an honor and a pleasure to have you with us this evening. It was so wonderful how this all came together. Um, you know, what a pleasure it was to be able to step back in time, to be able to hear that interview take place with you and Studs in 1993. So glad that that happened then because that was just something that spurred us to think, well, hey, this, this would be a really nice subject for um, this particular art therapy session. And then it just went, <laughs> it exploded from there into what we have as a wonderful event this evening. So thank you so very much. Simone, do you have any final words? I know OS, I definitely want you to, to chime in as well. 
Yes, and this is our last art therapy for the year. Um, ARP Foundation has always supported these programs. Um, again, if you are interested in um, more programming, please reach out to me because there's so many more stories that we can tell. Art truly is um, our history. And you know, as we're going into older things, um, there's all lots of opportunities to bring more programming and uh, allowing what technology allows us to share it and not be siloed. So anyway, thank you all for participating and OS, I'll turn it back over to you. Well, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> I um. I'm overwhelmed by tonight's events, by just being here in the studio, seeing so much of everything here. I wanna thank all of them, our volunteers, all of the folks who continue to encourage me and support me as we serve our young scholars. Thank you again, Richard, for sharing your gifts and your talents with us. Uh, thank you again, Grace, for pulling this together. Thank you again, Simone, for being the best version of yourself in regards to you know, our, our therapists. And I wanna thank the staff and the team at the AARP Foundation Experience Corps, the folks who I work with on a daily basis, who are the wind underneath my feet, my director, Greg Brown, our uh, office manager, Janice uh, Ryan Finney, our community engagement specialist, uh, Lakeisha Thomas, Simone Moore, Katie Conahan, and Miriam Swayze, Marlo Passmore, thank all of you for your hard and diligent work as we continue to teach the next generation. This will conclude our art therapy special presentation for Black Fine Arts Month this month. And we hope to see you at the next event. It's back to you, Grace, and, and thank you for our winners. And please make sure we have your information because I'm gonna be the guy it's going to mail you your prize. So be sure and get Grace your information. Thank you all again. Wonderful. Thank you, Grace. All right, everyone. On that note, thank you so much for joining us. This was a wonderfully successful art therapy event. And we wish you all a wonderful evening. And please um, keep your eye out for any other emails from um, OS in the future for our next special Studs Turkle listening event. I'm sure we'll be doing another one soon. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Carol Estelle and Marty Price and Anthony Estelle Owings Mills from Maryland. Thanks so much for coming on with us all the way from Maryland. And Darlene, if you are comfortable with doing so, if you could please in the chat list your uh, address, your mailing address now, and we'll make note of that so we can make sure that you get your prize in the mail soon. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Grace. Oh, you're welcome. It's so good to see you again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Put your mailing address in the chat, and um, that way we will have it recorded. And I'm also going to write it down here um, for OF to be able to send it to you.
Sorry, this is Anthony. I put the uh, I put my address in a little wrong there. I didn't have my glasses on, so I went back and corrected it. Forty five seventeen. No worries. Thank you for saying that, <laughs> Darlene. You. Darlene, I need your. <laughs> I keep messing up here. <laughs> I, okay. I keep tapping the wrong key, so it's all fragmented. <laughs> Jeez, I'll try it one more time. <laughs> Darlene, uh, I need a last name, please. Okay, one more. Grace, mm -hmm. Anthony is my son, so I need to get on him about those glasses, right? Oh, is he really? That's right. Fantastic. That's right. Yes. He's been, well, I, he's listened to a couple of our, he's been on a couple of our listening parties, so. Oh, <laughs> well, welcome all the way from Maryland. How nice it was to for you to be able to to join. I know what it's like to you. have your son be a part. My son came home quickly today. He had to get his social security card so he could get a job. At <laughs> All <life>. right. <laughs> <laughs> I was so nice to see him. I know. As a matter of fact, they're supposed to come here tomorrow, right, Tony? That's that's right. We, we should be there tomorrow. <laughs> oh, very we're, good. We're discussing, we're discussing weather implications right now. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll let you know. Okay, but Anthony, you're saying it's just four, five, one, seven, Rebecca Circle. Yes, that's okay. correct. Not Thank an you. extra four on there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Without glasses is very difficult. I have done it three times. I don't know if it's it's <laughs> if it's all together. It looks like it's still not together. Oh. This is Marty Price. Okay. I'm gonna try one more time here. So that is connected. Okay, so I have 1401 East 55th Street. Yes, 806 North. Okay. I think I finally got it all together here. <laughs> 806 North and then and yeah, I don't have your city. Okay, all right. I, I'm sending it all together finally. Oh, okay, My gotcha. finger kept hitting the, there the ship is. bar. <laughs> there it is. No my two worries. 60615, okay. So I have, um, I have Marty, you're all taken care of. Anthony, you are all taken care of. Darlene, thank you for your last name. You are all taken care of. And then the last one is Carol, Carol Lynn. <laughs> Carol Lynn. Uh, and two. All right. I think we have it, everyone. Thank you okay. once again. <laughs> so it's a go. You. Thank you. All right. Have a great evening, and you'll be you getting those same. soon. I know OS will send them out soon, probably you know early next week. So enjoy. Okay. okay. Thank, right. thank you so much. Good night, have everyone. A great night and a great weekend. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Bye bye. You too.